One particularly attractive material for multi-material lightweight construction at Audi is carbon fiber reinforced plastic, abbreviated to CFRP. On the new Audi R8 Type 4S, this material is used for the first time in the body structure. The material-related advantages, in particular the relationship between weight and stiffness and strength, are significant in the case of CFRP. In the case of a repair, or if these CFRP components need to be replaced, however, a large amount of know-how is required. Please note, this program does not replace the instructions in the Audi workshop manual. It should only be used to clarify the individual steps that are necessary to remove an outer B pillar. In addition to a steel aluminium mix construction workplace VAS6673, the following special tools and aids are needed to remove an R8 outer B pillar. The extractor for welding fumes VAS892003 and a thermal cutter VAS852011. This is supplied as a complete system in a trolley. In this you will find the X-Pro Therm Control Unit, seven thermal pads and seven contact elements in the associated different lengths. In addition, the trolley contains 10 one-hand clamps, five wedges and various spindles, pipe elements and adapter links. You will also need contour blade set VAS852005. Adhesive strip remover VAS6349. Special drill with drill bit for stainless steel rivets VAS852009. Compact booster VAS6790 and to push out the rivets, riveting die D14 and the new rivet insert VAS6790-63. Alternatively, the rechargeable riveter VAS5279A or VAS843001 can be used. As preparation for the subsequent processes and to attach the thermal pads, these two artificial resin parts on the B-pillar must first be removed with the aid of a chisel. Now the PVC seam seals can be removed carefully using contour blade set VAS852005. Work carefully so that you do not damage any parts. Then the residue from the PVC seam seal can be removed completely with adhesive strip remover VAS6349. On the CFRP outer B pillar, there are a total of 16 rivets. All of these must be hit through to remove the mandrels. Now the rivet heads are drilled with a special drill VAS852009. And struck off with a flat chisel. The remaining pieces of the rivets are then removed with the compact booster or the rechargeable riveter. The riveting die D14 and the rivet insert VAS6790-63 are needed for this. First, the vehicle or the body must be raised with a lifting platform to approximately 600 millimeters. Then two thermal pads type C365 times 60 millimeters are placed in the contact elements and are pressed to the sill panel with a spindle. 
Only in this way can the thermal pads give off their thermal energy efficiently into the material. The heating element must lie flush with the sill panel. Then position the thermal cutter VAS852011 parallel to the sill panel at a distance of approximately 1000 mm and secure with the handbrake. A tip for you here. Fix the thermal pads to the contact elements or body using cable ties. This will enable the thermal pads to be positioned in the best possible place. Caution! As the thermal pads reach 320 degrees, the cable ties must be removed before heating, as otherwise they could contaminate the thermal pad linings, melt or even burn. The thermal pad type B200 times 35 mm is now inserted into the contact element and is positioned vertically behind the B pillar. The necessary contact pressure is achieved here with a spindle. Now the thermal pad type D800 times 33 mm is inserted into the contact element and positioned at the bottom of the B pillar. Again, the necessary contact pressure is achieved with the spindle. Before the thermal pads are heated, the extractor for welding fumes, VAS892003, must be set up. After this, the thermal pads can be connected to the control unit. Call up program 201 on the control unit and start it. After 45 minutes, the thermal pads are not removed completely, but are instead released in stages so that the bonded joints do not cool too quickly. Using an insulated screwdriver, a gap is now created between the aluminium sill panel and the CFRP outer B pillar. The CFRP B pillar is released from the bonded joints and from the sill panel of the body using plastic wedges. Please ensure that the plastic wedges are not damaged due to bending or indentation. If necessary, the wedges can be returned to their original condition using a file. The steps to separate the CFRP B pillar, shown in the previous section, are now repeated twice at different positions on the CFRP B pillar. Step 2. Secure thermal pad type C365 times 60 mm to the sill panel. This is positioned horizontally and the necessary contact pressure is created with the one hand clamps. Then thermal pad type D800 times 35 mm must be attached on the side and also secured with one hand clamps. Again, it is necessary to use the extractor for welding fumes. Select program 202 on the thermal cutter and start the heating phase. After 45 minutes, the thermal pad is not removed completely, but is instead released in stages so that the bonded joint does not cool too quickly. Then the outer B pillar can be separated from the inner B pillar with the plastic wedges. The released areas must be held under tension with the wedges. Step 3. Now position thermal pad type C365 times 60 mm horizontally on the top of the B pillar and secure it with the one hand clamps. In addition, the aluminium profiles to the rear of the vehicle must be heated so that the heat reaches the bonding. For this, two thermal pads type B200 times 35 mm are attached to the longitudinal members and tied down with tensioning straps. Then position thermal pad type B800 times 35 mm vertically on the B pillar and secure it with one hand clamps. Again, it is necessary to use the extractor for welding fumes. 
Select program 203 on the thermal cutter and start the heating phase. After 45 minutes, the thermal pads are not removed completely, but are instead released in stages so that the bonded joints do not cool too quickly. Then the outer B pillar can be separated from the inner B pillar with the plastic wedges. Once all the steps are being carried out correctly, the B pillar can be completely removed. You have now seen what steps are required to remove the CFRP B pillar properly. More information can be found in the workshop manual Audi R8 2015 Body Repairs. In the Audi Service TV program CFRP Repair R8 Assembly a B pillar, the steps to bond a new CFRP B pillar are explained and you are told which tools you will need. Make sure that all the work materials and tools are available at your workplace. When cleaning the bonded joints, make sure you do not damage the CFRP structure or the aluminium components. The cable ties must be removed before the thermal pads are heated. Always observe the instructions in the workshop manual.